Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Raspberry Pi OS and DSA and DGLux on a Raspberry Pi. The end result of this is that you can use the DGLux 5 designer and viewer from any computer that's connected to your LAN using the Pi as your DSA server. Um, this is great for a lot of reasons and it's an easy way to set up a simple DSA server. Um, the end result is that you can go to the IP of your Raspberry Pi from your browser and computer, like so. Log in, use DGLux, and have access to your DSA data from your computer. So this is the end result. Clearly I still need to request a license, um, which I would do by filling out this form here. By the way, to clarify, if you get this dialog, this is where you paste your license information if you've already been given it. And if not, you can click Request License, fill out this information, select the type of license that is appropriate, and then click Request. Um, and then you'll be given your license information. So how do we achieve this result? Before you get started, you'll need a Raspberry Pi and all the things that go with it, a micro SD card, a micro USB power adapter, a network cable, a USB keyboard, an HDMI monitor, a Raspbian installation zip file, and your computer, and that can be Windows, Mac, or Linux, although we'll do these steps on a Mac today. So the first thing you'll need to do if you haven't done it already is to install the Raspberry Pi OS on your micro SD card. There are lots of videos of this installation and there are a few different ways to do it. You can use noobs, etc. I'll just go through the steps here quickly to install Jesse Lite for a Mac. Skip over this part if you already have the Raspberry Pi OS installed on your micro SD card. So the first thing I did was I downloaded the zip file for Raspbian Jesse Lite. I have that here already downloaded. So I'm just going to unzip it. And here's the disk image for the Raspbian OS. The next thing you want to do is follow the installing operating system images documentation for your OS. Again, I'm doing it on a Mac. PC and Linux installation instructions are here. For a Mac installation, the first thing you need to do is go to About This Mac and select System Report find your USB SD card reader, which you have connected to your computer. And you're looking for the BSD name, which in my case is disk2, but it might be different in your case. You can also do this from the command line. So now that you have this name, disk2, the next thing you're going to do is open disk utility. I'm doing this by hitting command space, and then you can type it here. And open it. In this case, this is my disk 2 volume. It's already unmounted for me, but yours is probably mounted. Um, you would click unmount right here in the disk utility to unmount it. You can do this from the command line as well. So now that you have your volume unmounted and you have your BSD name for it, the next thing you want to do is go to the command line and type the following command. Now, with this command, you want to replace disk2 with the name of your disk. And if your installation file has a different name, for example, a different release date, you're going to want to replace the name of that .img file here as well. So I'm pasting that command, hitting Enter. It's going to ask me for my computer password. And at this stage, it's installing the entire OS on your micro SD card. This takes about 10 minutes and you won't have any indication that it's working except for this cursor here. So go away and do something else and come back in 10 minutes and it should be done, give or take a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. That actually took longer than 10 minutes. I think that was about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, it just varies how long it will take, but now you can see it's done, which means Raspbian is now installed on my micro SD card. Now I can eject that volume, take the SD card, and put it in the Raspberry Pi. So once you have the HDMI, the keyboard, and the network cable attached to the Raspberry Pi, and you have your SD card in, Connect the micro USB power cable. Your Raspberry Pi should boot up and your monitor should show you the Raspbian boot screen, um, which is a command line, it's not a desktop. 
the first thing you'll need to do is enter the default Raspberry Pi username and password, which is username pi password raspberry. Then you'll need to do two commands. The first is to enable SSH so that you can do the rest of this process from your computer. To enable SSH, you enter sudo raspi config, then select advanced options, and then enable SSH. The final thing you need to do from your Raspberry Pi with these peripherals is find the Raspberry Pi's IP address. Once SSH is enabled and you have the Raspberry Pi's IP address, you can disconnect the peripherals if you like. You can leave them connected. It doesn't matter. But you can do the rest of this process from the command line on your computer. Okay, now that I've enabled SSH on the Raspberry Pi and I have the IP of the Raspberry Pi, now I can connect to it using SSH from my Mac, which I'm just going to do by typing SSH and then pi at and then that IP address. And I get an error here because I'm recreating a server that I've made before. You can say, see it says remote host identification has changed. Um, you expect this, you know this probably is an attack. So to get around the warning, you can use this command right here, this key generation command. So I'm going to copy that and paste it there. And now I can try the command again and it should work. And you'll have to say yes, you wish to continue connecting and enter the password for your Raspberry Pi, which if you've left the defaults enabled is just Raspberry. Okay, now you can see it says Pi at Raspberry Pi here, so um, we're connected via SSH and any commands we do from this point will be done on the Raspberry Pi computer. So the next step is to install DSA. Now there are a series of commands below this video in the blog post on the DGLogic website and you're just going to copy and paste those one at a time. We're going to make the directory to hold the files. We're going to cd into that directory. Continuing with these commands. We're going to get the zip files that we need. Then once we've gotten them, we're going to unzip them. There are a few different files to do that with. Ah, I need to cd into this directory. I'll make sure this is in the commands under the video. Now I think that last command should work. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, now we have all of our DSA installation files. We do need to add one file. So you paste this command here and it opens an interface on the Raspberry Pi for creating that file. You copy this entire script, which will be below the video. Copy that, paste it in the file, and then Control X to close and Y to accept changes and enter to accept the file name that it suggests. Now there are just two more command line commands for finishing the DSA installation. And now you should be able to start the DSA service. So you type service DSA start. This does take a couple of minutes at this point, even though it says that it's done. So I'm going to stop recording and in two minutes I'll try to start DGLux from my Mac. Okay, now it's been a couple of minutes and that delay only happens the very first time you start the DSA service on your Raspberry Pi. It shouldn't happen in the future when you start the service. So now I'll go to Chrome on my Mac. I'll type the IP address of my Raspberry Pi followed by port 8080 and I'm able to access DGLux. Now there's one extra thing you can do to make this a bit easier, which is put this on port 80 and that way you never have to type port 
8080, you can simply type the IP address and go straight there, which is a nice shortcut. I mean, it's just a couple of extra steps. Still in your SSH connection, you want to type nano server.json. It opens this JSON file and you can correct the port number to 80 and the HTTPS port number to 43. Control X to leave, Y to accept changes, enter to accept the file name, and now all you need to do is type the IP address. There's a slight delay for this as well. Okay, but after that delay of a minute or two, now you're able to simply go to the IP address and access DGLux. So now we've installed DSA with DGLux 5 on a Raspberry Pi. We can use the Raspberry Pi as our DSA server. Anytime you want to start or stop the DSA service, you can do it through your command line using SSH. Um, for now, just to show the final step, I'll type service DSA stop. And once I do that, I can power down my Raspberry Pi if I ever want to. And then if I'm ever starting it up again, I just need to be sure to type service DSA start when it boots. Thank you very much.